Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we're at Form Next. So this is Form Next 2022. Uh, there are some amazing manufacturers here with loads of cool new tech and loads of fun things to look at and touch. So we are gonna take a look around, do some interviews and show you some of the massively cool stuff that is coming in the next year. Hey guys and dolls, we are over at Nexa 3D's booth with Lewis and we are talking about the XIP. So the XIP is an ecosystem of wash and cure and these uh, really glorious looking machines. So talk to us a little bit about build volume and specs and what these things are doing. Yeah. Right. So uh, the Zip takes everything we love about our industrial 3D printers and just distills it down to the desktop size. So it's powered by our LSPC technology, which is all about ultra fast, high throughput printing. Uh, it's an inverted resin process like you might be familiar with for uh, SLA or DLP. Um, but what separates it is we use an LCD technology, so yep. a UV, UV LED light array. Uh, then it's our imaging mask, which we use a monochrome 4K LCD screen. Yep. Basically everywhere where it's black will block the light, everywhere it's white lets that light shine through. The great thing about using uh, monochromatic LCD technology is that it's going to provide even, uniform, distortion-free uh, curing across the full part bed, and it's all the way down to the pixel level, so it's down to 52 microns uh, in terms wow. of the, the part detail. Cool. And then the real star of the show is our patented uh, LSPC Everlast 2 membrane. So when you're doing an inverted process, uh, the, the physics of the process uh, if you move too fast, can actually cause uh, peel forces or yep. delamination yeah, yeah, yeah. separation. Big problem with a lot of desktop inverted SLA printers. Yep. This is a self-lubricating membrane, so this allows you to actually leverage the full speed that an inverted SLA process is right. capable of. So, on average, looking at another DLP or LCD technology, we're probably around six times faster. Uh, wow. If you look at an inverted SLA process, uh, we're anywhere from 20 to 40 times faster depending on the the part being printed. Wow. So, okay. Wicked fast. Our part demo that we do actually takes just six minutes um, and you wow. get a part uh, printed from start to finish. We then also have the beautiful wash and cure station here, so which, I'm going to, so, which I'm going to try uh, and knock anything When you're looking at desktop, over. you want to make sure that you're conscious of the footprint that you're taking up, not only with the printer, but with all of the post-processing as well. So this is a wash and cure station in one. So here you would have this loaded with either um, IPA, if that's what you choose to use, yep. or we have our own solvent called X-Clean. Right. That's going to be non-flammable and it lasts about three times longer than IPA. So right. a great uh, solution for you there. Wash it in the bucket and then whenever you're ready, here's a great example, you just pop this off. There's a turntable that just pops right on here. And you go you straight over to your and then it's ready to go, all in the That's same footprint. That's cool, yeah. And from start to finish, from wash and post cure for most of our materials, you're done in anywhere from seven to 10 minutes. That's so pretty cool. So a fast process as well. So workflow is really difficult when it comes to this hobby sometimes. There's real times where you just run out of space um, having a wash and cure station that's all in one, not requiring two separate processes, is huge. Absolutely. A lot of people are quite sensitive to IPA smell. Uh, it also tends to evaporate if you leave the if you leave the lid off for more than six minutes. Yeah. Um, so obviously, so having your own having your own wash uh, materials as well, really really cool. So when it comes to these machines, are these using proprietary resins or are these using just sort of normal off the market stuff? So uh, the Zip comes with uh, several different options. We have around 30 validated resins that Nexa provides. Right. Um, but we do provide open source licenses as well uh, for the more advanced users. So you can make your own resins, you can buy third party resins. As long as it's compatible with our wavelength, which yep. is 405 nanometers, yeah. uh, then you can put it in there and run it. Super simple, and that's speaking of that, um, this is a really great feature here. So uh, this is our resin bat. Yep. The membrane is just clipped to the bottom. And then we have our material cartridge here. Loads and it's gravity fed, so it's self-leveling and automatically feeds and keeps the resin bat full. That's cool. Uh, this entire thing is held down by four electromagnets. So if when you're ready to change resins, all you have to do is disengage the magnets, pop this off, you could pop on a new build so plate. So completely toolless. resins. Uh, in a matter of seconds. So it's also completely toolless for the uh, for, for attaching the bill plate as well. There's no thumb screws, they're a thing of the past. Absolutely, I can give you a great example here on this one. So all it is is a single finger. Push it down push it and down, pull it straight off. And then when you're ready to do this, you just pull it back up to re-engage. 
Nice. Good to go. Nice. So simple, easy, and that's also billet aluminum. So it, it's, it's not going to break. It's not going to break. It's very durable and sturdy. Um, and easy to swap out. So we've obviously got auto refill in here. We've got tallest entry and tallest taking out of your vat. Have we got a heated build enclosure or a heated vat or anything so like this that? Is, this is not heated, okay. um, but our resin vat, uh, all the resins that we provide don't need heat in order to work. Um, we find that there's going to be a little bit, uh, because we print so quick, um, depending on the resin that you're using, yep. there's going to be a little bit of uh, 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 heating that goes on just to the reaction of the resin. Yep. Um, and that works just fine. And that's as well. fine. Yeah. So let's talk slicers. So, do yeah. Nexa have their own slicer, or is it open source and it does like Cheetu Box and things like that? Or is yeah, it so we use our own software <laughs> called Nexa X, and for the zip, we offer two different versions. There's Nexa X Basic, which comes, that's our free version of the software. Right. Allows you to use any of our validated resins and still gives you access to all of the features that you want in terms of uh, scaling, duplicating doing a, a Z stacking and different arrays. Um, even if you need to, like maybe you're doing a part need to create a hole in a plug uh, for draining, things like that, all available in the software, super easy, automated supports. Um, and then we offer uh, NextX Pro uh, for Zip, and that's going to unlock every feature you can think of, and right. probably more. That's what you're gonna wanna use if you're using a third party resin, um, so that you can dial that in for uh, optimal processing with the Zip. Uh, and then you can do change everything from your uh, exposure time to your support structures. So a really low level of control that you're going to have over being able really to deal with those like different materials. Detailed level of control, absolutely. It's amazing, brilliant. Well, thanks very much for taking the time. Yeah, absolutely. We'll catch you on the next one. Thank you. Okay, guys, adults. So we're with Ray Shape taking a look at some really cool resin printers. So this one is the Edge One. It's your Edge LCD one. printer. Yep. So tell us about it. What are the build dimensions and everything else? So the build dimension are uh, 192 mil, which is uh, X axis. Yep. Uh, y axis is 12 cm, so 120 mil, and. Uh, Z axis is 20 cm, which is 200 mil. Perfect. So they are like 8.9 inch screen kind of yeah. size, yeah? yeah. So 4K. normal resins, 4K. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Then we come on to the Shape One. So these are your DLP range. DLP systems. Yeah. So this is more of a six inch size build plate. Yeah. So talk a little bit about the difference between LCD yeah. so and DLP. The difference between, between LCD and DLP is the LCD has got the L LCD screen inside, and uh, you have a, a platform, you have a, a heating chamber on the platform instead of inside the machine. Yeah. And on the DLP technology, you will have a projector fitted in, which is reflecting, the image is reflecting to the platform, and the heating chamber is fitted inside the machine. Okay, so which one's more accurate for the people so, who don't necessarily um, know the difference between the technologies? So for the mass production, this is more accurate machine, yep. more reliable, I would say. And for um, if you are a beginner yourself, this is mach this machine would be more um, for. I would say this is more accurate, but it's not for the mass production. So it's, so it's more. This is machine. more. This is more an entry, entry level, level machine. Yeah. If you're a hobbyist yeah. at home, something yeah. like that, and then That's you right. move on to this when you're yeah. starting to do more Where, industrial yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's for more industrial stuff. So do you have different resins for DLP versus uh, LCD, or are they the so same? So our our um, ray shape is open system source, so you can use any resin, not just our resin. Okay. So our resin can be used as well. Uh, as it's slightly cheaper than uh, going with someone else. Yeah, yeah. But uh, overall, yeah, it's a, it's all open source, so you can use whatever you want. Yeah. Unless and then we've got validated. flexibility in build sizes yeah. as well. So the Ray Shape One Dental, that's obviously like a six inch, and yeah. then we go over to like more of an eight point nine inch yeah, yeah. size when we get to that. Yeah. Um, so and the th sorry, go on. If I just tell you the difference between this uh, three machines. Yeah. In the accuracy so this would be 50 micron accuracy xy yeah and this would be 75 micron accuracy and this is 100 micron so right there's okay. a difference but um yeah this is more for dental purposes printing uh, imp up implant applications um yeah so we've got some of the stuff here yeah gingiva gums right so these are some of the dental resin elements that you yeah. can do full build plate and they are flawless they're also sticky and i shouldn't have touched them 
Yeah. I shouldn't have touched those. Oh, I wish I'd learned my lesson so many times. I've done that so many times at this point. Like, it's just poisonous. So, anyway. Right, so we then come on to the wash and cure station. Here it is. So is this an all... You all right? So this is the wash and cure station. So is this an all-in wash and cure as well? And everything? It's only uh, curing. That's only curing. Right, yeah, okay, fine. So after you print, you need to put into the washing station. Yep. For uh, three minutes, just wash it in the isopropyl alcohol. Yep. For three minutes and then, yeah. Let's look at some of those. Custom trays. So these are, Custom I'm trying to make sure they don't fall off. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, they are very very accurate so like so the support structure are you guys using your own slicer Soft, for this yeah slicing software so you can see that the interface layer on these is really fine so there's going to be almost no post processing on this at yeah. all yeah. so also this is i'm assuming is down at like 100 microns for this one because yeah, yeah. this is off of yeah, this yeah, one yeah this machine. so like it is it is perfect and it's not just one that's perfect it's a whole build plate of perfect all at once so that's a huge amount of workflow that you're gonna be able to put through a machine like that so then we come on to the big the big one yeah so what's the big one the p200 p200 that's correct so this is more for um industrial part of right so um uh, with this machine you can print jewelry stuff some small pieces because uh, it, it has precise accuracy. Right. The machine. So what does this one go down to? So these are uh, like 100 microns yeah, yeah. and this 50. This is 32.5. 32.5. Resolution, yeah. Wow. Okay, that's super fine. But so, the build, yeah. And then what yeah. build? And then what build volume are we? Are we and back at? Uh, a small platform because oh, it's, it's tiny. Small. Look at that. Oh, it's so small. It's more. such a giant machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So is it literally because you're obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to get that ultra, ultra, ultra fine yeah, quality yeah. that yeah, you, yeah. you have to ultimately have this giant machine yeah, to get down to right. that level of accuracy. And that means that because you're focusing the beam yeah. so tightly, it can effectively increase the resolution. Yeah, yeah. And that's why you get such, such fine parts. But that's this correct. is really more for like professional jewelry making Makers, and casting, yeah, yeah. things like that. Okay, cool. Thanks very much. I'll catch you on the next one.